can you folks explain to us why you withdrew the Thank you. Well, listen, we've been listening to Canadians. We want to make sure that we get this legislation right. C-21 is a really important bill. And we're committed as a government to protecting Canadians and protecting Canadians from gun violence. So we want to make sure we're listening and we get it right. So how does withdrawing an amendment protect Canadians from gun violence? Well, we're going to have four more meetings. We're going to be listening to people. I'm sure you've read Bill C-21, or at least I hope you have. There's a lot of really good, important pieces in that bill. I'm not asking you about the legislation. I'm asking you why you withdrew the amendment. The Conservatives are saying it's evidence that what you have been saying, what the government has been saying for months, uh, that this didn't affect hunting rifles, that that was a lie. What do you say to that? Well, listen, I've been, I've been catching some of the tweets out there that somehow this is a win or a loss. There are no winners or losers when people are dying from gun violence. So what we're committed to is keeping Canadians safe. And we want to make sure that that's done. So if it means um, withdrawing Bill uh, G4 and, and G46, um, you know, my colleague Talib can talk about some of the other things that are in G4. Ghost guns were in G4. Is this an acknowledgement that those amendments were flawed? No, it's an acknowledgement that we need to be listening to Canadians, and that's what we're going to Did do. Did you feel that you needed to do that to save the bill, uh, C21? I, no, we... Listen, we're working across party lines to make sure that the bill that comes out is the right bill. We're working across party lines. If you were watching what was going on in there, you saw that there was collaboration with all parties. So we want to make sure that we're working with all parties in the House, that we're working with all Canadians to ensure that the bill that we that comes out of this committee and goes back to the House is one that will, is the best possible bill. Do you want to come back with criteria or a list of models? I don't know. That's why we're having four meetings to listen. I, I appreciate that this is a politically touchy subject and that there's a message you want to get to Canadians, but why withdraw the amendments if there wasn't something wrong with them? Because we want to listen. And the, so you, you listened and people told you, what, withdraw the amendments? This, this goes too far? They told us to withdraw the amendments. There were, there, were, there were organizations, there's victims groups, there's Canadians who absolutely support what was in there. Do you see a way forward to bring back criteria or a list of guns? I see a way forward to listen and work with the other parties to come up with something that we can all be comfortable with, something that we can all be proud of that will can keep Canadians safe. This is something we're going to be working on together. Mr. Nur Mohammed, I know you want to say something here. Let's I, I, no, no. I <laughs> don't. So, so what, but like, what is the message? A lot of gun owners are going to be watching what's happening today, and they are going to say, okay, this is an acknowledgement by the government that these amendments went too far. What do you say to those people? I think the message here is that we need to pass legislation. Uh, we need to pass C21 in a way that addresses the issues that we want to deal with. Number one is reducing gun violence, ensuring that, the, ensuring that we are dealing with things like ghost guns, ensuring that we are moving forward on protecting the rights of hunters and indigenous communities, but also making sure that we don't lose in this conversation victims. And so getting it right means sometimes taking the time to have the conversations that may not have been had, to reflect the views that we have heard, to reflect the concerns that have been heard, and to ensure that what does come out of this is legislation that may not make everybody on either side of this conversation happy. It's not going to be perfect, no legislation is, but that we produce a piece of legislation that everyone looks at and says the process was followed in a way that gives everyone satisfaction that the outcome is a good one, and that's what's important. But what I want to understand is you say, like, we withdrew this because we're listening. What, what was the part of the amendment? What would you acknowledge now was the part of the amendment that, ne that required this to be withdrawn? What, what's the problem here? Like, it is ultimately a simple question, isn't it? I think it's not just about... Uh, it's not a question of there was something wrong with the amendment because I think what was there were many things in that amendment that were very good. I think sometimes process is important, and so did you fail our the process the way the amendments were put forward is that the, like if it was to do do it again different differently, what would you do? I can't mean, go listen, you can't go you, you can't go backwards <laughs> in time. But what I can say is we are in a place right now where you have consensus at committee that there is a path forward. You have consensus at committee that there is a way for us to work together, as this committee has done on a variety of different, different, very difficult issues, to get to a good outcome. Look, we cannot play politics with gun violence. We cannot play politics with keeping Canadians safe. What we have to do is to bring people together around this so that whatever comes out the other end is something that victims 
victims and uh, and those who have been affected by gun violence can say yes not only were they heard but that there is a good outcome and that hunters and indigenous communities and farmers can say not only were they heard but they can feel confident that their rights are also protected that is what's really important here so, you know I, I do want to know going going ahead though Gun owners are going to want to know, is this coming back in any form? I understand there's still discussions to have, but what would your message to those people be? You know, even, even the gun lobby has said that they want a de definition for what military-style assault weapons are, right? You've, you've heard that even from, from the gentleman standing right behind you there who was censored by the Public Safety Committee for his absolutely egregious comments about people on the committee. So even the gun lobby has asked for... A definition so I think it's really important that we are listening and then then we'll come back we can't give you an answer of where we're going to be and I don't know how much we want to mine this but you're saying you're listening to that gentleman but your frustration with him was <laughs> quite evident there I think I don't want to speak for Ms. Demoff but I think uh, from my perspective what's really important is that the conversations that we have are respectful um, members of this committee staff departmental officials have been under incredible attack and have received the most vitriolic kind of abuse. You know, politicians, that we're, that's what we're here for. But for staff and for public servants to receive that, I think has been a real signal that we need to bring the temperature down on these conversations. And most importantly, that when we have conversations, that people are coming to the table with the intention of producing legislation that will keep Canadians safe and make sure that we are not particularly uh, affecting Indigenous communities in a negative way, but that we don't lose sight of what we are trying to do, which is to keep Canadians safe. Do we have any sense of timeline on this? You're talking about needing to move forward. We're going to be having four meetings, mm -hmm. so we won't be starting next week. Um, they will start the following week. But in terms of, like, you're, you're saying we need to keep alive this definition. Is there... I'm saying we need to listen to people to see where, where we go forward. So I, I'm not going to commit to anything that will be done. We're going to listen in those four meetings and see what we need to do following that in consultation with the other parties, in consultation with Indigenous peoples, in consultation with Canadians. So I'm not going to commit to what is going to be in there because we genuinely want to listen. Okay. Thank you for your time. Uh, bonjour, uh, Peter Julian, leader parlementaire du MPD. Uh, on est ici pour commenter uh, que le gouvernement, enfin, uh, a, vu, a eu raison et a décidé de retirer uh, l'amendement au projet de loi C-21. Ça, c'est quelque chose qu'au niveau procédural, l'MPD a poussé depuis, uh, depuis plusieurs jours. On a vu ça à la Chambre des communes et aussi au comité. Il faut dire que C-21 a des principes euh, euh, positifs. L'idée de faire un gel euh, sur les pistolets est quelque chose que l'MPD appuie. Et on aurait préféré que ce projet de loi soit adopté il y a quelques mois, en novembre. C'était possible, mais là, le gouvernement a déposé un amendement qui n'avait pas de sens. C'était un cafouillage et un manque euh, de respect pour le, le procès, euh, un processus qui est... Euh, uh, valable. Et effectivement, on en a vu, à cause de tout ça, les délais de plusieurs mois. Aujourd'hui, uh, le gouvernement a reconnu qu'ils n'ont pas écouté uh, les fermiers, les fermières, uh, les chasseurs uh, et surtout les peuples autochtones. Et ils ont retiré uh, l'amendement. Uh, ça, ça donne uh, espoir que maintenant, on peut procéder avec l'essence de C-21. Uh, le gel sur les pistolets, c'est quelque chose qu'on appuie. Et on espère bien que dans les prochaines quelques semaines, ce projet de loi pourrait être uh, adopté. Thank you, uh, Alistair McGregor, the NDP's public safety critic, and I'm also a member of the committee. I just really want to emphasize that when those amendments were introduced in November by the Liberals, they completely derailed any progress that we were making on C21. So the Liberals really have to wear that. And it took them several months to understand that and come forward today to realize that there was such widespread opposition from hunters, from farmers, and indigenous communities in particular. So I'm glad to see that they were withdrawn, but I also want to hammer home the point that we would not be here today if it was not for the NDP's work on this. We signaled to the speaker at the beginning of this week that these amendments were possibly out of scope, and at today's meeting I was prepared to move a motion to refer those amendments to the speaker, and I'm fairly confident that he would have ruled that they were out of scope. So 
I'm glad to see they're withdrawn. I think now is time for our committee to come together, start those constructive conversations on the remainder of the bill because there are important amendments that we have to make for the airsoft community. We have to get back to talking about the handgun freeze and I look forward to working with colleagues from all parties around the committee table to do just that. Today's a good day because it's going to allow us to make progress on these very important items. What, Thank what you. Do, what do you think was behind this? What was the strategy here from the Liberals to do this the way they did? Uh, that's an interesting question. I'm not quite sure because up until today, I think their public stance had been quite firm that they were going to proceed with these amendments. I think they came to a realization through our signals this week that we were going to refer this on procedural grounds to the speaker. I think they understood then that if they were to make any kind of progress on the remaining parts of this bill, and I want to emphasize there are some important pieces to C21 that we're very interested on moving ahead with and working on. In order to make progress on those other parts of the bill, these problem problematic amendments had to be dropped. So I think the, the Liberals finally today realized that in order for progress to be made, they had to drop them. Pierre Pauli have said that, you know, actually he thinks this is temporary and that if the Liberals ever get a majority, they're just going to bring back these amendments and try and uh, you know, ban hunting rifles. Do you get that sense? Was this a deliberate attempt to try and take hunting rifles away from Canadians or just simple incompetence or, as you're pointing out, perhaps uh, improper procedure in which the, with the way they went about it? You know, I don't know uh, what reasoning the Liberals ultimately had for these amendments, but I definitely will underline the incompetence part of it. Um, when those amendments were dropped, they single-handedly derailed any kind of progress we were making on the bill. And uh, now that they are gone, we can begin to work on the more constructive elements of C21. So yes, uh, the Liberals uh, have to wear this. I think they privately have admitted that they made a mistake, and you may hear the Minister reiterate that, but now that they have ultimately reached the conclusion that this was going to negatively affect farmers, it was going to negatively impact hunters and indigenous communities. They've made the smart decision to withdraw them so we can get back to work on the important elements of C21. Yeah, can I add, I'm just going to just add one, one thing, uh, that the Conservatives did not lift a single procedural finger through all of this. Uh, they fundraised off the amendment, but they did nothing in the House at all. It, this has all been the NDP's heavy lifting, working with communities and people who felt that they haven't been consulted. And, and that's an important thing to emphasize, so I don't think Pierre Paul has a lot of credibility on this issue. And the minister said this morning. Uh, pense uh, le gouvernement a tiré une leçon, on espère bien. Uh, que, que là, il y avait un projet de loi qui, était, qui avait plusieurs aspects positifs. On voulait travailler. Uh, ça aurait pu être passé, ça fait des mois. Puis, au lieu de faire cela, ils ont déposé un amendement qui a provoqué une confusion totale et un cafouillage dans tout l'examen de ce projet de loi. Alors, je pense uh, maintenant, on a une place, comme uh, Alistair vient de dire, uh, pour vraiment regarder les aspects positifs de ce projet de loi et on espère bien que dans les prochaines semaines, ça va être adopté. Est-ce que vous seriez pour une définition des armes d'assaut prohibées pour que justement on évite cette question-là de toujours lister des armes et de finalement juste créer une définition? Et les approches que le, le gouvernement pourrait prendre, nous, on a des idées là-dessus. Il faut dire que le gouvernement n'a pas consulté personne là-dessus. Alors, c'est quelque chose qui doit être fait, effectué de façon euh, claire et systémique. On n'a pas vu ça avec l'amendement. C'était le confusion, le cafouillage total. Et euh, effectivement, on en a vu euh, la confusion que ça a apporté depuis des mois. And the minister said this morning that, uh, you know, we're getting to work with our parliamentary colleagues to craft a solution that will keep assault style weapons off our streets. Has the NDP had conversations with the Liberals about amendments of this nature? So the stage that we're at right now is that we have the announcement, well actually it was, it was adopted, the motion to withdraw the amendments. That's where we're currently at. Uh, we've agreed as a committee to have four additional meetings with witnesses. So any additional amendments of this nature are not yet in existence. And so I will reserve comment until I can actually see what the Liberals are coming back with us. I do know that there is a consensus around the committee table to work on ghost guns because that was affected by these amendments. And we know from law enforcement that there's a great legislative need for this. So I'm confident that we can work together as a committee on the ghost gun element of it. But would 
the NDC support Thank a ban you. on assault style weapons? We'll see what they come back to us. Can I just ask you very quickly about the NDC? Oui, oui, ça va bien occuper. Ben oui, Medicago, dans un premier temps, quelle assurance vous pouvez donner aux Canadiens que la propriété intellectuelle, les informations vont rester au Canada et non pas aller au Japon? Est-ce que vous avez des assurances? Bien, d'abord, la priorité, c'est de sauver les emplois parce qu'il y a des familles qui sont touchées, qui ont une bien mauvaise nouvelle. Euh, vous comprendrez que ça, c'est la priorité numéro un. C'est pour ça que je travaille avec mes collègues de Québec, le ministre Fitzgibbon. J'étais en contact avec le maire Marchand hier, mon collègue Duclos. La deuxième chose, évidemment, vous l'avez dit, c'est de protéger la propriété intellectuelle et la technologie, parce qu'on sait que euh, les vaccins à base de plantes ont un avenir. Ça, c'est clair. Alors, c'est pour ça qu'on a investi à l'époque euh, dans cette euh, technologie-là, parce qu'il faut savoir qu'en... Au début de la pandémie, euh, les scientifiques hésitaient à savoir quelle plateforme de vaccin serait la plus utile pour la COVID-19. Euh, moi, j'ai parlé à l'OMS, entre autres, et tout le monde est conscient que c'est une plateforme technologique qu'on doit préserver. Alors, hier soir, jusqu'à très tard, je peux vous assurer, j'ai été en contact avec des PDG à travers le monde pour voir qui, éventuellement, pourrait reprendre les activités de Medicago. Et maintenant, on est en mode solution. S'il y a une chose que je peux dire aux Canadiens qui nous écoutent aujourd'hui, on est en mode solution. On veut préserver les emplois de la technologie et évidemment toute la propriété intellectuelle. Mais avez-vous des garanties comme quoi c'est protégé, que ça s'en ira pas au Japon? Bien, écoutez, c'est Vichy qui est le principal actuel. vous avez, effectivement, la propriété intellectuelle appartient présentement à Mitsubishi parce que c'est Medicago appartient à Mitsubishi. J'ai parlé au président où on a échangé hier euh, avec le président de Mitsubishi au Japon. Euh, clairement, euh, ils entendent respecter tous les engagements qu'ils ont envers le gouvernement du Canada, le gouvernement du Québec. Alors, on continue de travailler avec eux. Aujourd'hui, je vous dirais, on est en mode solution. C'est, c'est, c'est ça le message. Là. Tout le monde est à la table pour essayer de trouver une solution parce que d'abord, c'est les emplois qui comptent. Hein, parce que euh, la technologie, c'est une chose. Le savoir-faire, c'en est une autre. Mais, mais pour mettre ça en œuvre, ça prend des gens. Alors, pour moi, là, la priorité, c'est de trouver une façon de préserver ces emplois-là. Effectivement, on est en train de, de parler à différents partenaires. C'est une situation qui est relativement complexe, vous comprendrez, euh, mais tout le monde euh, est en train de voir qui euh, pourrait être le partenaire industriel, justement parce qu'on sait qu'à Québec, on a euh, ce talent-là, la technologie, la propriété intellectuelle, et euh, certainement, c'est ce qu'on est en train de faire présentement. Est-ce que le Canada va pouvoir récupérer une partie des investissements de 113 millions de dollars que vous avez investi? Bien, je vous dirais, la priorité aujourd'hui, évidemment, on a tous les recours légaux et ça, la compagnie s'est engagée à respecter tous les engagements qu'ils ont envers le gouvernement du Québec et du Canada. Mais vous comprenez qu'aujourd'hui, euh, au lendemain d'une annonce comme celle-là, la priorité, c'est vraiment les emplois, c'est de voir qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire avec ça parce qu'on euh, est tous conscients que ce, des vaccins à base de plantes peuvent servir. Vous savez, l'idée, ce n'est pas de regarder en arrière, c'est de regarder en avant. Euh, Medicago travaillait sur une plateforme d'une trentaine de vaccins possibles. Alors, on essaie de voir qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire ensemble, mais je peux vous dire que tout le monde, euh, aujourd'hui, euh, essaie de trouver une solution. J'ai des discussions toute la journée encore avec différents, euh, différentes compagnies à travers le monde euh, qui pourraient potentiellement être intéressées. Et vraiment, aujourd'hui, c'est d'essayer de préserver ces emplois-là. Bien, écoutez, euh, effectivement, on travaille depuis des semaines avec les dirigeants de Mitsubishi pour essayer de trouver une solution euh, à Medicago. Euh, donc, euh, vous comprendrez que, oui, c'était pour moi une surprise, l'annonce euh, d'hier, le moment de ça, mais c'est, c'est clair que depuis un moment, on essaie de trouver un partenaire qui pourrait vouloir euh, reprendre ces activités-là. Et là, on continue ce travail-là. Comme je vous dis, on fait ça main dans la main avec le gouvernement du Québec. Euh, hier, avec le maire Marchand, mon collègue Jean-Yves Duclos, tout le monde est là-dessus pour essayer de trouver une solution. Le ballon chinois, est-ce qu'il y a volé au-dessus du Canada? Écoutez, je n'ai pas les informations sur cette question-là. Je pense qu'il faudrait s'en référer euh, aux agences de sécurité publique pour vous donner une réponse exacte là-dessus. Pas de réponse deux. Écoutez, comme je vous dis, ce matin, vous comprendrez, avec la nouvelle d'hier, j'ai passé plus de temps sur Medicago et d'essayer de trouver une solution pour les travailleurs et les travailleuses. Je n'ai pas les informations les plus exactes là-dessus. Je pense que les agences de renseignement pourraient mieux vous, euh, vous répondre là-dessus. Merci. Sure. 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 We're we're in solution mode, as you would expect. Uh, this is uh, the first order of business: is to try to preserve the jobs, uh, the, inter- the, in- the intellectual property, and the technology. We all know at the time that the uh, a plant-based vaccine uh, is promising for different things. You know, at the time when uh, COVID-19 appeared, uh, scientists were. Uh, looking at uh, different family of vaccines. We know that mRNA seem to be 
at the most effective, but everyone agreed that a plant-based vaccine could well help in a future pandemic. So that's why our, our first order of business is really to try to find a partner who can help us preserve the jobs, preserve the technology and the intellectual property. Uh, I spoke with uh, the uh, OMS director at the time, and I think everyone agrees that this is something we should be doing. Uh, and that's why we've been engaging with, you know, until very late yesterday, trust me, I was talking to CEOs around the world to try to see who could be uh, the next partner in this uh, journey, because uh, we all appreciate that we have enormous talent. Uh, this technology is promising, at the, and we want to preserve the intellectual property. And so uh, I even yesterday exchanged notes with the CEO of Mitsubishi Chemicals in Japan. Uh, I can assure you it's all ends on deck in a matter like that. Uh, sure. Uh, good to see you. Just it's nice up. to see you as well. Just coming from the south door. Uh, so uh, the 173 million are. are you, is there I would say that's not the, the main focus today. We all have uh, we have a, a number of legal recourse, but the order of business preserve the jobs. Honestly, uh, after this announcement, there's families in Quebec which are trying to to see what's next for them. So my first order of business. Uh, with the government of Quebec, and I spoke with the mayor of Quebec yesterday and with my colleague Jean-Yves Duclos, is ready to find a, an industrial partner uh, who could take the business forward or even transform that into an R&D center. So uh, it's really about finding solutions now. Obviously, uh, we have legal recourse, uh, and the company assured us that it will respect all their commitments to the government of Quebec and the government of Canada. The other question I have is, we all recall when Health Canada approved the Medicago vaccine, and then it's, that was about a year ago, a vaccine has not been delivered. Surely your officials and others saw some problems coming? Well, I mean, and that's why we shifted. You know, uh, Medicago uh, at the time, uh, you know, different people thought that they could produce a COVID vaccine, but they came at time, to your point, where everyone realized that we need to move on. The interesting thing about what they're doing is their family of vaccines, which cover about 30 different diseases. Uh, and when you talk to scientists and experts, they'd say that, you know, a plant-based vaccines may well be the solution for a number of things. So that's why uh, we're so committed to find a way to preserve the technology, the intellectual property, and the talent, because you need the people, obviously, so that that research can continue and eventually come with a product. And when you say preserve the talent, do you mean within the one entity, keep everyone together, or finding jobs? Well, the other we're we're working on that, as you would expect. I mean, this is not an easy uh, situation, particularly for the families that got that that news yesterday, and the workers. Uh, as much as people as we can uh, preserve, and the jobs uh, would be helpful. Uh, I've been talking to people from across the nation in the United States, around the world, uh, to try to see whether they'd be interested uh, in, in that technology, because I think it's a valid technology. Uh, and the first sort of business now is really not the real legal side, it's really about the business side. Let's try to find a way for these families and these workers to have a job. I'm good for questions unless you want to talk about Chinese five days. So. Uh, no, uh, 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 there, uh, there is no better than me, perhaps, on the detail of that. D'autres choses? Non. Merci tout le monde. Bonne fin de semaine. Really Merci. Thank you. Do you have any comment on the balloons? As of right now, I, all I can say to you is that uh, we have detected uh, a balloon uh, that uh, is believed to have uh, originated from China. Uh, but at this time, all I can say is it is being tracked uh, by NORAD. Is there any NORAD scramble or anything like that? Again, I have no other comments other than that. Thank you so much, though. Appreciate it. Do you have any concerns because your riding is a huge part of the, the upper BC coast and interior about uh, spy balloons going over top? Or? Well, I think that's something that all Canadians should be concerned about and something that our government should take very seriously. And the riding I represent, as you mentioned, uh, butts right up against uh, southeast Alaska and of course you know, Russia isn't that far uh, across the way. So um, security and, and ensuring that we're doing everything we can to protect our interests, I, I think, is uh, on more and more people's minds as uh, as we see things like this. They're, they're kind of hard to track, and I mean, I remember an escape weather balloon that was they tried to shoot down. CF-18 pilots tried to shoot down back in 1998. And found it very hard to shoot down. But since you have such an open space, would it 
do you support downing balloons over your riding, or is that something you just hope never happens? So far, it's not something that constituents have really brought up as a, as a concern, so I haven't spent a, a huge amount of time looking into it. Um, but, you know, I think the expectation would be that, uh, that Canada does everything that's necessary to protect our, our uh, territorial interests and ensure that, uh, that these kinds of spy balloons aren't drifting into our airspace. I think that's something that's very concerning. All right, thanks, Chris. Have a great weekend.